All right. So hello and welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live for Saturday, August 13th. I'm Tammy Moore, one of your co-hosts, along with Peggy George, Paula Nagel, and Lori Moffitt. Lori is out for the day, and I'll be filling in doing the opening and the closing today. Our topic today is Letters to the Next President. All right, our newbie question. Oops, sorry. Let me get this back. I clicked it. Here's where uh, I think Just we need an intro. Tammy. So I will I want to over. introduce uh, Christina before we go on to the newbie question. Thank you for jumping <laughs> in. I'm I'm rusty at this. Thank it you for jumping in. It is not a problem at all. You and I were clicking back and forth on the same slides. I am so excited to have Christina Cantrell here with us today to share the very latest news about this amazing initiative for students called Letters to the Next President, and it's now 2.0, no longer 1.0. I have been following this project since it first began in 2008, which was such an incredible time to hear um, the voices of youth all around the world, and especially in the United States, about the election that took place that year. An incredible amount of work has gone into making this a really fantastic experience for students and teachers. And even though it's a US-centric project, since it focuses on elections in the United States, it also is a great model for bringing student voice into civic engagement and community-based civic action projects anywhere in the world. Christina is the Associate Director for National Programs at the National Writing Project. She's been working alongside Writing Project educators since the early 90s, exploring the emerging possibilities of the Internet and network technology. Christina leads National Digital Media and Connected Learning Programming and the National Writing Project Educator Innovator Initiative. Long name, but it is a fabulous initiative. And, and she brings a background in curriculum studies as well as participatory arts practice. You're going to see a lot of evidence of that in this project. She teaches in a connected learning certificate program that she is helping to develop at Arcadia University. So with that, I want to say welcome, Christina. And now let's go on to the newbie question and ask you to just bridge this gap for us and share with us why you think it's important for teachers to provide learning experiences for students to actually share their voices on civic issues that they are concerned about. Great. Um, thank you, Peggy. It was really a wonderful um, welcome. And I really appreciate being asked to be here. And I've been thrilled by um, uh, learning with Peggy and lots of other teachers since 2008 um, about this project and really excited that we're bringing it back this time around. Um, so starting with this question, I think this is a great question because I think, as Peggy said, underlying Letters to the Next President is really this focus on civic uh, participation and uh, civic action and thinking about um, issues and topics that students really care about So and giving them a chance to do something with that, um, that passion that they bring to these topics. So. Um, I guess I would say why it's important, you know, sort of at, my, at the base and at the part that, um, you know, at the core of it, um, which is not necessarily about teachers, but about us as people in the world, I think we need the kids. We all need each other, right, to actually tackle these big civic issues that um, continue to challenge us as a community, as a population. So really at the base, I think that's why it's really important. We really need each other, and we need the kids and their creative thinking and their new pers like the perspectives that they bring that can be completely new, <laughs> stuff we never thought of before, um, and as well as their passions and their energy. So um, at the very core, I think that's what's really important. I also think it's really important um, to have 
opportunities, authentic opportunities for kids to actually really participate, to really um, use what they're learning and to connect it to real world um, ideas and issues and problem solving in the world. Um, and I think it's both because we need them, but also because I think it supports their sense of agency and learning, that it really, um, like, why are they learning this in the first place? It's because, you know, this connects to all of this other work and we, we're connected in larger systems and it allows us to see ourselves as agents within larger systems and then imagine how we might change some of those larger systems too. Um, and um, I think it's really important too and something I've been working with a lot with teachers and thinking about connected learning is the way that um, connecting to interests, both kids' um, personal interests, or connecting their learning to their interests, so both personal interests, but then also thinking about interests as political, you know, interests can be very political, like those things you have a real interest in are some, sometimes very, um, are often political as well as personal, so, so really starting from that place can be a powerful way to engage learners. Um, and then finally, I would just say that in terms of um, this work, I also think it's a powerful way to support kids in being both physically sort of ready for the world beyond school, but also community ready and uh, college ready. So we'll talk about some of those connections. I also think a project like this can support and, you know, learning experiences about sort of issues can support real cross-disciplinary work in schools. So that's another, um, topic and something I'd love to hear folks talk about and think about on this call today. We have a, um, a small group, which I think is, um, you know, indicative of the fact that it's August, <laughs> but also um, I think it's great because hopefully we can talk a little bit um, too, so. But yeah, that's my answer to that question. Should I just segue into the project, Peggy? Tammy? Absolutely. Great, great. Yeah, I can see people in the chat talking about um, how we don't do enough with civics education overall, and um, I'd love to, to talk about that. And this project, I hope, is a way to start to leverage some of that. So let me just introduce what is the next, next president 2.0. I'm really honored to be able to work on this project this year. It's a project created by teachers, and it's for teachers and students. Um, so, and we actually don't have any um, uh, special funding for this. We're, not, we're pulling together resources um, and we're creating a space, a support, we're trying to create a supportive space for youth to publish letters to the next president that doesn't have any advertising or anything like that and really um, supports them in the ways that we think can be powerful as educators. Um, uh, I wanted to just say the mission of Letters to the Next President in the next slide um, is just to support the development of young people's civic participation and um, by providing a safe and supportive space for youth writing, media creation, and publishing about public issues and concerns. Um, and I would say that that 2.0 <laughs> part of this is both to indicate that it happened again before, that, you know, as Peggy said, in 2008, we had the first letters to the next president, and that was a really powerful experience. Um, this is the second iteration of it. But also, eight years later, we're really in a different media environment. We're really in a different communications environment. What does a letter mean today? How do we get our voices and our um, ideas out there in the world is rapidly changing. So 2.0 also indicates that this is a project that is connected um, online and that embraces social media and multimedia work as well as um, text-based letters and, you know, what we might call more traditional letters. So um, uh, that's why we talk about youth writing and media creation here. Um, and so this slide is just meant to sort of think and brainstorm many of the ways that um, this project can be connected to different topics. Um, and um, if you want to add some ideas into the chat, feel free and go ahead. Um, you know, this picks up on civic participation as we've, as we've been talking about, but also um, supporting youth in crafting arguments, 
really thinking about the role of social media and how uh, to well use social media, excellent on information literacy, web literacy, news literacy pieces. Um, it's very much about, you know, how do you do research in a 2.0 world, um, writing, revising, publishing. It touches on so many different things. So if you have other ideas too or ways that you are thinking about this cross-disciplinarily, I would uh, really um, encourage you to, um, to share it in the chat because, you know, we're sort of, I guess this is one thing I want to say is that like we're really co-designing this together. So, you know, feel free to jump in here, include, there is no right, one right way to do this project. Um, it's really an open project for you and us as educators to design and develop for. Um, so, uh, to that end, I just want to introduce you to the website real quickly, letters to president.org, number two. <laughs> And um, this website is what we've um, put together uh, right now. And I would encourage you to go there um, while we're talking and sign up. There's a place to sign up right there. I think I may have put it on the next slide, too. Um, but there's a place to sign up on the site. And you'll start to get um, uh, bulletins just twice a month that, have, that highlight resources and opportunities. And what we've been doing for several months now is starting to gather resources and opportunities for educators that support this kind of work in the classroom. Whether you're a social studies teacher, or a science teacher, you're an after school educator, um, an English teacher, et cetera. We've been trying to grab resources from around um, the internet to support this work. Um, and Peggy has put a lot of those into the Live Binder. So Peggy did a really wonderful job curating a set of resources from this site into the Live Binder. So I encourage you to also go there. So um, one thing I want to, the other thing I want to mention about this um, uh, slide is that the, the young girl on the left, so this is a picture, this is a video that will give you history of the project. So if you go to the About page at this site, you can click on this video and hear about the history and the goals of this project. Um, but this picture, uh, the young woman on the left there was a senior um, in Mississippi in 2008. And this is her talking about her participation in the Letters to Next President project then. She now is a teacher herself, a high school teacher in Mississippi. And she is doing Letters to Next President with her kids this year. So we're totally thrilled. And I thought you guys might appreciate that little story. <laughs> and we can't wait to learn more um, and hear from her. We hope to interview her uh, down the road. So, um, so um, as I said, this um, project started in 2008. And Ellen Shelton was the teacher of that young woman at the time. She was a teacher in the Mississippi um, High School. She's the director of the University of Mississippi Writing Project. And she wrote a, a piece um, about that experience and some of her suggestions for thinking about Letters to the Next President 2.0 this time around. Um, she shared um, an idea of, um, she developed what she called a purple party back then. <laughs> and um, the purple party was meant to support um, the kids in really getting beyond party politics and party dynamics and really talking about the topics and issues that are important to them. And um, what I would, I'd like to just stop and emphasize that point. Letters to the Next President is really meant to support um, kids and writing about topics and issues that they care most about and not um, meant to be uh, advocating for um, a candidate or um, even addressing a particular candidate. So um, the letters are meant to be to the next president, whoever that person may be. Um, and so Ellen has some really wonderful ideas here. You can just Google this. This is also in the live binder and on the website. Um, about um, how to facilitate some um, uh, supportive discussion across um, what can be pretty um, divisive um, political divides. Um, she, she talks about the ways that she supported um, supportive discussion in her classroom. So I'd encourage you to check out that article. Um, Again, Letters to the Next President, you can sign up and find out more about more resources like this if you sign up 
and we also have social media that you can follow. Um, oh yeah, so now, um, oh, so Jackie asked, so let me, yeah, so Jackie asked if this is for older students, and I probably didn't mention, um, because um, we are working to be COPA compliant, and so um, Letters to Next President as a publishing site is available for 13 to 18 year olds. Um, and um, in certain circumstances, we will work with youth who are slightly younger, let's say you're in a fifth, sixth, seventh grade class that has mixed kids. We'll talk to you about the COPA compliancy issues so that we can make sure that things are COPA compliant, but it is um, primarily for older kids. However, we think, as Peggy said at the beginning, that this is a model for how you can support youth in a variety of ways um, in digging into topics and issues that they care about and having them and using the fact of this election to really leverage deep conversations about those topics. And there's many young kids um, who, you know, all the kids, all of us, are subjected to the same media. They're tapping into lots of social media. We're all seeing things and, and needing to talk about it in different ways. Um, so we will share some resources, Jackie, that are for younger kids too, and some ideas about how you might work with younger kids. Great, thank you. Um, so right now um, on the screen, um, and um, I'd love to hear your ideas about working with younger kids too, by the way, so we'll get there. Um, but on the screen right now, I am showing you the um, a a screenshot of the new website that we are working to launch Monday and Tuesday. So this is a sneak preview into this, and we're really excited about it. Um, this um, letters to president.org, that website that I uh, this at this address um, that I showed you before, will turn into um, a site like this on Monday or Tuesday. Um, that will uh, be a place where youth can start publishing their letters. This website will be open to submissions all the way, um, once we launch it, all the way through um, to the election. At the election, um, after the election day, we will close the site to submissions, but we will keep it open definitely at least through the inauguration. Um, but, um, you know, so that we can all read and um, hear what the youth are talking about and also share um, the work and learn from it. So this is a sneak peek into the new site that we're putting together, and I was really late getting Peggy my slides because we've been just, you know, working to get this thing together. But um, basically what you're seeing is just the map. There's a whole, the page shows different letters. Um, uh, but right now you're just seeing a map, and this is a, one of the letters popping up from Texas. And, um, uh, it's a high-tech high school in Texas, and they've been working on letters all summer, and um, they pre-published um, some of their letters here so that we could see it and be inspired by their work. The other orange dots that you see there are also different sites where there are letters. So um, what we imagine we're going to see um, into the fall is uh, sites popping up all over the country. And a site at this um, website, there's, you know, site and website, so sorry about that, but <laughs> a site at Letters to the Next President um, could be a school, it could be an after school program, it could be a, um, uh, uh, like a church program or anything like that, like a group of where um, youth are gathering and can be supported in doing this work. Um, and then um, uh, a, someone uh, from that site is sets up the site, so it's geolocated and connected to the map. And then a site can have multiple groups, so anybody who runs a site can invite other educators um, to create groups. And then once they create groups, then those groups are where you add kids to a certain group. Um, so every site has a bunch of groups connected to it and a bunch of um, uh, youth are in those groups. So let's say you're a school, if you want to administer your school site, that's great. Then you tell your other colleagues, you invite them in. You can create your own groups too, and you might create them for different um, classes you have or different situations that you have. And then um, the youth, you give the youth a member code, and then they can log into the site. Um, one of the things to know is that we don't require emails for kids. Um, they just need a login and a password um, for the site. So 
that's one of the ways we've been um, trying to make this open and available um, to all youth. So I can talk about that a little bit more. Um, so here is um, an example of a letter. So this letter um, is the one in Texas. Um, these youth have been doing social media work for a long time. They've been online for a long time. So they have all the permissions and they're very comfortable using their full names. Um, so here you'll see the student's full name. You'll see a little intro. And then, um, uh, and then let me I'll answer that question in a second. And then um, this student actually made an infographic as part of his letter. So um, we will start to see lots of different media, including things like infographics, which is really interesting um, as part of letters and building arguments. Um, another letter, uh, just to show you real fast, this one is, uh, this is also from um, Texas, from the same school, and um, this one is a spoken word letter, so the two girls collaborated on a spoken word um, letter to the next president. They videotaped it and um, posted the video here um, as their letter. Um, and then here is um, another letter from a young woman um, in Philadelphia named Ajene. And this is more typical. The site defaults to showing the first name and last initial. So um, the teachers can decide if youth's identity um, is shown or not. You can edit that. But this is the default. It would be first name, last initial. Um, and, um, and this is a more you know, traditional quote unquote letter, a text-based letter. And um, Ajene added an image, um, and I supported her in doing like a creative copy search for it. Um, so um, it was a lesson in, in like digital media at the same time that she was working on uh, this letter. So uh, just wanted to share you some of the examples. And what's exciting is that each letter has its own URL, um, so that you know they can be uh, shared and individually um, uh, discovered. Also, um, when you make letters, you tag them with issues. So these are some of the issues that are starting to pop up on the home page. And, um, uh, and these issues are meant to support the letters in connecting to each other. So for example, it's interesting that like family is the, the, the letter, the issue that's popping up first um, so far with the sites that are in there now. And if I click on letter, then you get to see um, lots of uh, six letters that are populated in there already that um, pick up on the issue of family and that youth tagged as being family as being a really important piece of this. So um, most of them are um, about immigration, um, which is probably not a surprise. Um, and then one of them is actually about vaccination. So, so to me, it's really interesting the ways that um, the issues and topics, you know, intersect, and the site is meant to bring the letters to both have the letters be displayed individually as well as show them in relation to each other. Um, so, that I think is a super exciting piece of the site that I wanted to uh, show you. So. Um, Someone asked about, what was the question? Um, oh, did I understand correctly? A teacher can create multiple groups on the site. Yes, so the way that it works is that um, one person needs to sign up the site, and that's how you get the geolocated little dot on the map. Um, but then that site can have multiple groups. So. Um, the site administrator could join you as a group administrator, and then you can make as many groups as you need to and as you would like to within the site. Um, and um, that allows for us to see. Oh, oh, the other thing that the site does, and I don't have a slideshow of this, is that um, we can also see all the letters from a site. Um, so it's nice to see, you know, we can look at letters sort of within their context. And we can look at letters across issues like this. OK. I know we'll have time for Q&A, and I'm talking a lot, so I'm <laughs> sorry. Um, but, um, but I'll try to grab some of the questions as we go along. Um, and I'm sure there's more about that. 
So right now, I bring you back to the current site, letters2president.org. This is the URL and the place to be. Um, and uh, if you go there and you sign up, then you'll get the email as soon as we um, get this thing launched next week. Um, it's also the way to keep up to date on different resources that are coming out. For instance, I know that um, uh, oh, one thing I want to point out was how many partners we have. So this is a sort of bad picture of partners, but if you go to this website and you click on the part, Connect to Partner link, you'll see all the different partners that we have at this project. Oh, thank you, Peggy, for adding the link. Um, and uh, for instance, Teaching Channel is a partner in this project, and I know that they um, are going to come out with a whole series on civic participation in the classroom um, soon, in I think September. So if you sign up here at Letters to President, when new resources like that come out, You'll, we'll send a bulletin and highlight those new resources. So there's lots of resources here already, and then there's still new stuff that people are working on, um, and uh, we can bring those to your attention. So um, as I said, we have lots of partners, so you should check out the range of partners, um, people from After School Alliance to Fusion, which is a millennial news um, group, Join the Debates, which is more of a sort of DC connected um, group supporting the debates and use connection to the debates. We have PBS NewsHour, PBS Selection Central, Teaching Channel, lots of folks that you will recognize and also some new folks in the mix who um, you might want to check out their resources because they've been doing some interesting work uh, to support educators. Um, this is the resources page, and I wanted to point out that we just put together this, um, uh, I think it's pretty fabulous, this elementary um, guide to um, doing this kind of work with younger students. Um, and it's really just a starter text, and it asks for you to give feedback and to share ideas about how you, if you're a teacher of younger students, how you might do something like this in the classroom. And um, we'd love to you know, support younger and elementary teachers in networking with each other to really um, be able to uh, share some of their ideas. Um, and this is a bunch of resources, including from Nick the Challenge, from Scholastic, from um, the National Writing Project, um, all of which um, uh, support youth um, who are under uh, 13. Um, and then this is an opportunity, um, uh, I'm just showing an opportunity page with this great um, uh, opportunity for teachers uh, that a high school teacher in Philadelphia created. Um, it's basically a scavenger hunt <laughs> that lets you um, do a little scavenger hunt to support your planning for how you might use this um, uh, project in your classroom. Um, and actually there's a really great article that was just published in the Teaching Channel blog to, I can share it here, um, that also is about um, uh, teacher thinking about how he's going to use this in his classroom in the coming year. So um, we know some of you are starting, you know, next week, um, and um, but lots of people are starting to think about like how this might be a way to start the classroom, start the year off. Um, and um, and then to that end, I wanted to share um, some resources that we've put together around, this is the National Writing Project's College Ready Writers Program. So that program um, really started as a research project working with rural teachers 7th to 12th grade. Um, it's now extended to include teachers from um, rural, urban, suburban sites around our country and um, also work with youth as early as fourth grade. Um, but it's a project where um, youth have been, youth and teachers, it's teacher professional development and resources for teaching youth about writing argument from nonfiction sources. Um, the resources are teacher created and tested in the classroom. Um, they include really robust um, ways to do formative assessment and lots of tools for doing that. And our research has shown that this work has significant impact on student writing and teaching. So I bring this up because um, College Ready Writers has put together some particular Letters to the Next President um, modules and mini units. 
And um, again, these are not meant to replace any curriculum that you might have, but they're created as mini units so that they could plug into a different existing curriculum. And they're really meant to support um, work at the beginning of the year, too, where you might not have a lot of scaffolding already in place, but that these are designed so that you could sort of jump into this at the beginning of the year. Um, so I just wanted to offer that as one another example of something that is um, available um, to think about and to potentially use in, in planning. Um, and yeah, so um, uh, this project is um, brought to you by the National Writing Project and KQED Education. I probably should have made a slide or two about some of the stuff that KQED has put together. There is a public media station in um, Northern California. And um, we're actually, this project is connecting with public media, starting to connect with public media stations all over the country. So I'm really, really hoping that lots of educators find out about this opportunity and we can get these resources really shared around and that we can all use um, uh, social media to, and our networks like Classroom 2.0 to share. Oh, great, Peggy, for sharing some of the links in LiveFinder. So there's lots of KQED stuff in the LiveFinder. Um, and I want to just um, focus on KQED's do now work um, for a second because this is also another place that um, is not particularly about the election, um, but is a nice model for um, creating some starter projects that you could do now, quote unquote, in the classroom um, as a way to tap into current events, to engage kids in civic issues and civic topics. Um, and it's designed um, to, to support youth all year round, both international and national topics of interest um, and across its disciplines too. So, so it picks up, so we're, you know, that's a project that goes beyond the elections and is influences some of how we've designed this project. So I want to mention that too. Um, and finally, I just want to, um, Peggy mentioned our EducatorInnovator.org initiative. And this is where, um, again, beyond Letters to the Next President, um, this is where the National Writing Project is leading um, the gathering of partners, opportunities, and resources for educators who are thinking about learning in connected ways. Mm -hmm. So we have lots of resources here about civic engagement, about um, participatory culture, about literacy and web and connected environments, um, how to support youth interests and um, developing work um, through their interests and curriculum. So um, this is a site to also sign up for that goes beyond this project but that um, could um, uh, support you in uh, various ways in continuing this work into the school year. So, I think those are sort of just the main points I want to bring up, um, and I'd love to um, hear your questions and Q and A. Um, again, I there's a few things like Trish um, mentioned early on that there that um, uh, we've been working with folks. Uh, Media Literacy Week as a partner on Letters from the Next President too. So if any of you are engaged in stuff like that or want to also talk about that. Um, I'd love for you to, to talk and share, um, you know, beyond just questions. So feel free to do that too. Okay, I'm going to stop talking now and let you guys pick up. Is that good? Hi, Christina. This is Paula Noggle. Um, one of the um, questions that I caught was, um, I think you answered one of the groups that Peggy asked, and then Peggy also asked, can teachers search for those letters only from their school? Like when you were showing us the tagging feature? Yeah. How does yes. that work? Can yeah, so right now, it's actually one of the things on the development list that still needs to get done. So probably in the next week or so, we'll have this done. But there's a splash page for each of the sites. Um, and each of the group, there, there will be a splash page. Right now, it's um, it's not quite working. <laughs> you know how these development projects go. But yeah, the intention is that you'll be able to to look at your school, look at your site, all the letters in that site, and you'll be able to pull that up and have a unique URL for that. 
Um, and then there is a general search button there, and we're also built, building a number of filters because we expect, you know, if we get lots and lots of letters in there, we want you to be able to, like, filter and search for the things you really want to look at um, uh, and have that agency in there. So we're building those tools now, too. Are the tags added by the people who are uploading the letters, or are they tagged at your end? Yeah, good question. Um, we have pre-populated some tags. So, and what we're um, when you type, the pre-populated tags show up. But then, when youth um, youth can tag their things themselves, and then the teacher, when the teacher publishes it, then the um, so the way it works is the youth submit it to the teacher for review, and then the teacher or the mentor or whoever does the publishing. In that publishing that's when a, a new tag goes live into the system and others can use it too. So a teacher has some discussion over how things are tagged and then we administratively will also merge tags that we see are similar and that um, you know are kind of standing on their own and we'll merge them with other things so the letters can show up in relation to each other. But it is open tagging and what's interesting about open tagging is that like it it opens the whole teachable opportunity for what is a tag, <laughs> you know, like that's sort of complicated all in itself. Okay, we had another question that came in um, saying from one of our participants that she teaches in a community that has Confederate flags painted on the sides of some houses and the tone of the presidential election this time around is alarming enough. How can I use some of the ideas without actually having third graders discussing the presidential elect the presidential candidates? I have minority students, some of whom are hidden minorities, who can be deeply hurt if another student parents a parrots a parent's intolerance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I um, there are a few resources that we could point to to support that. I think um, some of Ellen's experience in Mississippi might be helpful, although I realize that that's with older students. Um, and um, I'd love to hear anybody else in this call who might have ideas and um, thoughts about this. Um, uh, one, uh, one teacher that I know was saying that um, her students um, we're talking about one, um, a lot of the um, anger that was coming up in the election and it moved into a conversation that was more um, about bullying. But I think that, I mean, we, we welcome um, folks, let me just say that in the community guidelines and in our terms of use, we don't tolerate um, hate speech or threats or violence and we will take that stuff down immediately. Um, so the community guidelines, I didn't share them, I should have shared them, um, we're, um, could be really supportive, I think, of, um, uh, you know, again, not writing a letter that advocates one um, candidate over another, um, supporting youth and talking about issues and topics that they care about and then doing the research and the discussion within those classes about those topics. Um, and then um, knowing that um, we really don't want you to address a candidate and we really want you to support, um, uh, you know, um, in, provide citations, include evidence, all that. Um, and uh, um, I don't think I was going to say, Ugh, I'm blanking on it, but that, um, Oh, and then that, you know, violence and hate speech will not be tolerated. So it actually even opens up a conversation about what is violence and hate speech potentially um, so that we can um, sort of move collectively beyond that. I do think there are, there are hard issues to talk about, and I think that's why we need each other in this conversation um, to share the ways that we're approaching this in our classroom. And I'll just put in the chat um, the hashtag to next prez. So we have, um, we're hoping that people will share over social media the ways that they are um, approaching this with their youth. I don't, I don't know that there is, you know, 
a magic solution to this. I think it's 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 complex and complicated teaching, and we need each other to to figure out how best to approach this. Thank you. Yeah, Peggy, I think that's great. Let's have the community guidelines for the live binder. I'll definitely I'll I'll share that with you. Okay. Do you have any particular resources that would provide guidance? to the teachers on how to discuss controversial issues? Yes, yes we do. And I'm not sure if I can grab them as quickly at the tip of my um, here, but let me um, also get those to you so we can put them in the live binder. So I'm just making notes for myself. That, um, there's one piece, I think, um, yeah, let me not try to do that right now, but yes, there are issues, there are resources for that, and I encourage us to keep, um, when we all run into resources like that, yeah, the teaching tolerance, um, that's a great one, Paula, um, and uh, we can add a couple more, too. Um, I was wondering, personally, if there were any plans for um, either this initiative or the National Writing Project to do um, uh, maybe a Google Hangout or an on-air mm -hmm. or uh, some kind of webinar as we get closer to the election? Yes, yes. I, I apologize. I didn't say anything about this. So at educatorinnovator.org, um, we will, we're planning a set of webinars coming up um, uh, that will pick up on a range of topics. So two that I know of already, um, on, and let me see if they're actually on the website yet. Um, one is on the um, 15th of September and will be about um, a uh, kind of a, a rubric that's being developed that looks at how do you support, it's sort of a rubric and case study that might be helpful um, that supports um, youth writing and youth voice and then taking action in the classroom. Um, so that, um, let me see if I can find the link. So that's coming up on the 15th. No, they're not um, online yet. So um, that's called the um, the writing continuum, writing assessment continuum rubric, um, civically engaged writing assessment continuum rubric. And we're going to talk about that and the ways that you might be able to use this tool um, to support this kind of work in the classroom. So that is on September 15th, and that'll be at um, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. Um, again, I can provide a link when it's available. And then um, on the 20th of September, um, my colleague here in Philadelphia is going to do a show where she's bringing together a group of teachers who um, are doing this in their classroom this year. So we'll hear from them about the ways that they are um, supporting, you know, conversation around controversial topics, et cetera. Um, and one other thing that I wanted to say, too, is that the site itself, I think, will be an incredible resource because um, when the, all the letters that youth are writing are kind of mentor texts themselves, and they pick up on a whole range of topics and issues. And so I think that the letters themselves can be supportive of, of tapping into, you know, um, the way others might think. Um, you know, in this national context um, and um, in a way that might be able to support kids in thinking a little bit, um, you know, outside their immediate classroom and outside their immediate context and really look at this con the work that's coming from all over the country. So that's just something to consider too. The ways we can, we as teachers can use those as mentor texts. That's one of the things I'm looking the most forward to um, since I teach under 13s. Yeah. But um, I also believe that once you sign up, even if you had younger students, I believe you said there's um, you send out about twice a month an email that would have any updates that are going on. Is that correct? Yes, that's exactly correct. So um, signing up for the bulletin and to keep in that is just an information loop, and then um, once. And so I would encourage you to do that now, and you can continue to do that and get all those things. And we'll we'll make sure to have resources for um, across the grade levels um, and disciplines there. Um, and that doesn't commit you to that doesn't mean you sign up for the the, the site itself. That's a different process. 
All right. Well, that looks like all the questions we have at this time. This has been incredible. Um, I've been checking out the site uh, um, several different times, and we'll definitely be digging into Peggy's Live Binder with all of the resources collated in the Yeah, spot. she did a great job of it. It's so cool. <laughs> I'm excited. So we want to thank you very much. And Peggy, am, am I going to turn it back over to you? Absolutely. Thank you so much for that, Paula. And huge thank you to Christina. There's nothing like hearing about this kind of initiative from one of the creators because it really helps us know what to kind of zero in on and focus on as we explore those resources. I just am so amazed on the resources page. At first I thought it was just the pages that I was seeing when I clicked on that link, but there's a drop down menu. And there are all kinds of categories under that drop down menu. So be sure to explore all of those. There are some great um, professional development things if you want to share any of this with other teachers. Um, and there's also a toolkit with lots of great resources there to give you alternatives for implementing the program. And I love that it, it facilitates conversations about all kinds of issues, especially related to civic involvement and community service and those kinds of things that go way beyond the elections and will keep it alive all year long. So thank you so much for that, Christina. And I just want to tell everyone, we do have some great shows coming up. And next Saturday, we're going to have a fabulous featured teacher. Many of you probably know Matt Bergman. He does all kinds of great things with Google. And he's going to share some amazing digital projects for all students with Google tools. August 27th, we've had a change in plans and needed to reschedule that presentation. So we'll be having uh, another one scheduled in that place. So you have to come next week to find out what it is. Remember, we don't have a show on Labor Day weekend. That is September 3rd. Um, Labor Day is actually Monday, but we don't have a show that long weekend. But come back on September 10th. Heidi Samuelson has a fantastic presentation that is all about classroom resources using technology. And they're not just apps. They're apps and extensions and um, websites. So something for everyone. And then on September 17th, Laura Kronicki, another awesome presenter, is going to be focusing on global literacy and geography resources. That's going to be just a great session. So I hope you'll all come back and join us for that. And then just to wrap up, we do want to always say thanks to Steve Hargadon and all of the amazing work he does on the learning revolution. There are new things on their calendar all the time. Uh, many free virtual conferences, including the Global Education Conference that will be coming up in November. So I hope that you'll go to that site. It's always in our live binder and explore some of the great things they have. And I do want to remind you that our survey, survey is in the live binder. And <clears throat> You can, it will also pop up when you log out of the um, session. But if you'd like to get a professional development certificate, whether you're watching live or whether you watch the recording, that is all possible. So uh, be sure to uh, fill in that form so that we can send you the certificate. And finally, Special thanks once again to Christina Cantrell and all of the amazing educators that have worked to develop letters to the next president for us. And I hope you all have a great weekend.